Hey guys, welcome to another Big Dog TV repair videos. Hope you guys had a nice Christmas and hey, Happy New Year. Today is officially New Year's Eve. And today is officially 126 in the morning, December 31st. And what's that? Is that twenty dollars? Oh my God! This is that's a real twenty dollar bill. I wonder who left me this. Oh my God! That's a good way to start the New Year's off, huh? Man, I didn't even see that. Uh, Y'all don't leave me no comments uh, asking me can you borrow any money either. Come on, let me hold something. Man, I ain't, hey, you got to get your own, bro. You got to get your own. Nancy Sam, right? 55D five, five, looks like R710 NA17. 55 inch LED smart TV. And the problem that we're having with this TV, uh, it does not work. Obviously, that's why the TV is in this video, right? Okay, so we know that, but let's see what's going on with it. So I'm actually going to plug in the power to the AC. And if you look down here, so at the bottom, there should be a blue light that actually comes on. Showing that, showing you that the TV um, powers on as soon as you plug it in, as soon as you plug in the AC. Right by the insignia logo at the bottom. So I'm gonna plug it in. There's a blue light. There's actually no picture, okay? There's no picture on the screen. There's no backlight, looks like. And I'll take my light and get up on the screen here. I can actually see, I don't know if you can see that not on camera, where it says insignia. All right, so it's actually booting up now, then that should actually go away. Um, and then so the TV so you can start operating the television So let's take this bad baby apart and see what the flux is going on Okay, just to verify the model number of this TV I got it flipped around on its face and just look on the back cover and as you can see they obviously purchased the TV from Best Buy um, So right there on the second line where it says model this is the NS55DR710 NA17. And if we look down, we'll see on the white sticker right there at the very bottom of the sticker. Uh, it does say the TV was manufactured in 2016. Four years old, okay? These TVs are not lasting long at all, okay? So, obviously, the first thing we're going to do is, of course, take the back off. Pretty much self explanatory. Uh, I know it looks like one of the fake back covers where we have to take this off, but actually you have to take the whole back cover off. So all this is one piece. Uh, but the actual stand obviously has to come off before it, before that you can take the back cover off. Uh, there are no screws that support it right here. I stick the screws are actually on the bottom. There are actually four screws, two on each side, and just take those off. And the stand comes off and then you can take pull the rest of the screws out from around the back cover of the TV okay get the back cover off just pretty much basic simple smart uh, backlit LED TV uh, probably a 4k model also it has a pretty big heat sink on that main board so um, but they're just using a single LDVS cable so I don't know about that this is a Wi-Fi module. This module can be either separate, like it is on this one, or it can be made onto the main board. 
but you'll definitely recognize it because it has an actual an actual antenna on the Wi-Fi module that looks something like that at the top. It's a little connector right there. Okay. Right there. So you know it has like a tuner shield on it, okay? So so obviously the smart TV does also have the Ethernet port on the main board, so you can go that way for faster connectivity. That board there, this is the power supply board, okay? That's the board that powers the TV up when you plug it into the AC and hit the power button, okay, via the main board, okay? But this is pretty much where all your voltage is coming from for the, for the entire TV, uh, including the backlight strips or the LEDs, right? Okay, right below that is the TCOM board, okay, which uh, stands for Timing Control Board or TCON for short. Okay, now basically, um, so you know what, let's start with the main board, so maybe you're gonna understand a little better understanding of this. Okay, so the main board, we hit the power button or the remote through one of those wires, um, turns on the power supply, sends a command to turn on the power supply to produce the powers. And it also, the main board also produces the picture in a frame by frame rate. So just, a, just imagine a square picture produ being produced by this main board. Okay, so as far as, and you can also see your ethernet connector right here, okay? And through this long black wire at the top, it's where the frame by frame picture is being produced and it comes back down through to the bottom and it's hooked up to one side of the timing control board and that's what actually separates the picture so into the different um trying to say field lines or pixel lines okay so it knows you know what pixels to light up and everything and that is being split through here the left and through here the right side okay so if you have a problem with the whole picture most likely it's the main board okay if you have a problem with part of the picture like you get a line or a bar or something on one half or one side then most likely it's a TCOM problem or one of these associated driver boards which is as you can see the TCOM board is speeding there's a board here you can probably see it on camera too left and this board here on the right side to light up the pixels on that side. Of course, we've got our speakers. Speakers on both sides. One here, one here. And we also, this wire is actually going, this TV actually has some buttons that you can use. And it has actually all of the buttons, the menu, the input, volume, up and down. So, yeah. Right, so that's, I consider that very helpful, especially when you go to people's houses and they can't find the original remote, and it's like, duh, we don't use that one. Yeah, but it came with the TV. I mean, with the TV breaking, you're gonna need it. So, yeah, so always keep your original remote, okay? So, we are going to check our LEDs because obviously we have a backlight problem, and we need to check that circuit. And like I said, that circuit is coming from the power supply board. And let's see if I can find where it's coming from. Looks like that wire right there is going right into the TV. Yep, that looks like our LEDs. And if we zoom in on it, yep, that's it. We have, looks like three different lines. One, two, and then there's a... Oh, let me get my magnifying glass. Oh. Okay, this is kind of weird. I hope this is a uh, backlit TV. <laughs> but uh, it says V plus, VLED plus. It's a bunch of pluses. And okay, they're just using the plus and the minus. Okay, yeah, so you just got the, uh, hopefully it's just a, a edge, I mean a backlit strip, but just got the two lines, uh, three lines there, or I don't know, two lines on each side. Whatever, but we'll figure it out once we check them. Uh, the red wire is obviously the positive wire, so... Okay, so let's begin our troubleshooting process. People have been asking me, 
um, about these TVs, is it always the LED strips that gives that symptom with the black screen? And you can see the uh, picture only with a flashlight. Uh, how do you know it's the LED strips? Well, the only other thing it could be is either the power supply is not producing uh, the B plus to the strips or it's been cut off, okay? Maybe something's open. Or the only reason, it, only way it could be the main board is if you're not getting a backlight on signal or backlight on command from the main board. Uh, the TV needs a backlight on command from the main board to actually know when to trigger on the backlights as the television TV, as the television set is powering on, okay? And that's usually either um, a plus three to five volts, uh, depends on the TV, and it's usually marked on the actual plug that's coming from the uh, main board to the power supply, or that's going from the power supply to the main board. And this one, it's right there at the very top there, top corner. As you can see, that first one on the top portion. Okay, these are all, the labels on this side is for the plug, the, the pins, the wires on this side of the plug, and on this side of the plug is for these readings. And as you can see, the very top pin, which would be the yellow one right here, says BL on. Okay, that means backlight on, okay? We have a plug also from the main board to turn on the power supply. So the power supply is not coming on, then there's always a chance that you're not getting the power supply on for whatever reason from the main board, okay? Uh, so those are like the two main things that you would check as far as isolating any boards in the television or doing a board replacement. If the TV said it's not coming on or anything like that. But uh, this one right here, backlight on, this yellow pin, this yellow wire, I'm sorry, very first one, BL on. Okay. Then the DC bolts, I got it grounded to the chassis anywhere, metal on the chassis, it's fine. Okay, I just clip it in right there. And I'm gonna put this on the very first one. Hopefully when I get it in there, it can stay in there. Okay. All right, I'm going to plug it in. The light is steady blue. I'm going to hit the power. There we go, okay? And that is a signal that we are looking for for the backlight on from the main board. So we know everything should be working. And if I go to my actual LED plug, which is located right here, okay? Now that plug with the red and white wires, that is the plug that's going to the actual LEDs inside of the TV. Uh, it's going through the chassis. And now this one, the way this is marked, or the way this is designed is that you have two B, two B plus lines, both red ones on each side, and then it runs in parallel with each of these two return lines. So it has two lines on this one, two lines on this side. So a total of four lines, okay? And there's eight strips, so there's two strips on each line, evidently. So I'm going to do is stick my, while it's still on, I'm going to stick my meter in the red one for the B plus, that's the, LED plus, okay, it's also labeled right here next to it, okay, all right, and I'm actually getting 36 volts, okay, I'm going to go to the other positive plus, LED plus line, or LED plus voltage, and I'm also getting 36 volts. 0.9 volts, all right? So, I should just be getting some type of feedback voltage. Um, let's see, on these white ones, okay, there's nothing there. Nothing there. Nothing there, that's weird. Because that means that we have an open LED in each line. So, I don't know, that's kind of weird, but we definitely have a problem with our LEDs. As a matter of fact, let me double check it with my LED checker. Okay, so I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna take my positive line or leave my LED checker and go to the first white wire. There's nothing, it's reading open. The next line, that is reading open, okay? 
Okay. See my, my meter is reading good. Okay. So we'll go to the next one. Put our positive on the red. Our negative on the white feedback line. It's reading open. And so you can see that. And I'll try the next one. That is also reading open. Okay, so I guess that just proves that we have an open LED on each line. Okay, so it looks like we're going to have to start the disassembly process uh, for the TV so we can actually get to our LEDs. So, first thing first, safety always first. I'm going to remove this LDVS cable that's connected to our timing control board down here. Okay, because we're gonna test fire it up. You know, after we, after it's uh, not fully put back together, we don't want to we make sure there's no voltage coming through here and we definitely don't want to short anything out. Testing the metal, uh, because we have to disconnect our wires from right here, going down to our driver boards, to our screen, naturally, of course. Okay, and then, so let's disconnect it. I'm gonna make sure that these little metal contacts I'm just gonna make sure we're just gonna put this up under the board there, right there. So make sure no accidents can happen, right? Okay, there's no metal on top of this cable. And we obviously have to get to this plastic bracket down here, okay? And release our driver board so we can pull our screen up after we flip the TV set around. Okay, that's like in all LED, uh, uh, LED strip replacements or LED light replacements. It's the screen first, okay? So in order to get there, well, I was gonna have to remove these brackets. These brackets right here are for our feet. It is marked left and right, okay? And obviously remove our speakers and our speakers do disconnect from right at the speaker, which is cool, because we don't want them yeah, we have to disconnect those anyway, so we just to check, just unplug it. Oh, so now the speakers are removed. I'm actually just gonna just disconnect my driver boards from right here. There's a little tape on here also, so just pull this out. It's some kind of ferrite bead, which doesn't move. Uh, well, I guess it does move now. Oh, wow. Okay, anyway, let's make sure that you release those first so you won't forget. Um, and actually, now I'm gonna see if I can pull these out, but I think I'll wait till I get this bottom bracket off first. Make sure I got some room there. All right, so evidently, like I said, um, these feet are gonna have to come off first. So I have my, my handy marker uh, for our feet supports or our stand supports. And I'm actually gonna mark it so I know exactly where it goes. And so I would not forget to put it back on. Why do they have all this tape on? It's just crazy. <laughs> I'm also gonna color the screws also and the screw holes, okay? Always make it easy on yourself when you're pulling the stuff like this apart. A lot of screws, a lot of different pieces, okay? And when I pull all, when I pull both of these brackets off, I'm going to put them together with the screws. So, left one. Righty tight. And it looks like it only goes on one way, but I'm still gonna mark it just so I won't forget. Just mark it on the end. So I know how far it goes in. It's lined up. Put a little color on the screws. Okay, looks good. We got one, two, three, four, five, six screws. Three on each side.
we go. Comes right up. Okay. Excellent. And it looks like we have our power button assembly right there. Uh, with, you know, I'm sorry, a power button, but a uh, infrared detector with the LED uh, light under this insignia logo. That's the standby light. You know what? I'm just gonna go ahead and just take this off. This is our, this TV actually has some real buttons on it. So like I said, I'm just gonna take this off and just put it to the side right now. When I, when I get ready to test fire it up, I just plug this keypad back on. That way I can plug this whole wire right here. Okay, and I can be done with it. This, this wire goes to the keypad and also to the remote sensor. So I'll take, pull those out. Okay, be done with that. Okay. Now we have access to our driver boards. As you can see, there's one here, left and right, or right, left, however you, what you want to call it. And I'm actually going to leave that on, mount it like that before I take it loose and wait until I take the outer bezel off and then go up under there. And uh, looks like it's just tape, maybe. Um, I'm not sure, maybe there's some sticky stuff down there. But uh, what I am going to do is I am going to remove this tape that they have all on both sides of each driver board. That is actually grounding tape, okay? It's grounding the end of this piece right here, which is a little metal plate. Looks like, get a little better angle on there. Okay, it's like a grounding point, as you can see from right here to right here. And believe it or not, that tape, when you put it back together, please do not make a mistake and put the end of this tape somewhere else, like across these capacitors or anything. Otherwise, uh, it's done for, right? <laughs> if you short anything out down there. Um, I'm just gonna prove it to you. I've got my meter right here, okay? I'm gonna go right to the tape, okay? I'm gonna touch the metal, so that tape is highly conductive. So make sure that you put the tape back in the correct spot. Okay. I'm just gonna go ahead and pull all those pieces of tape loose from one side of the, from the side of the driver board on both sides, including that side over there that has some tape over there also. Matter of fact, I'm just gonna pull these out. Okay. I'm just, gonna, I'm just gonna wait and turn it around first and then I'm gonna unscrew those screws because I don't want it to slip out of my hand. You know, I don't want the bezel to slip off while I'm turning it around because I'm gonna have to turn it around anyway, okay, to pull the screen out and get to the LEDs. So, but what I'm gonna do is pull some more of this tape off, <laughs> which they got around here. Now this tape, I guess, serves really serves no purpose. Uh, is that on the bezel actually? I'm not sure, but I'm just gonna just pull it loose from one side just to make sure. Okay, there were screws on all four sides of the outer bezel. That's how many screws there were. Uh, so they're all pretty much the same size. I sure hope so. It's too late to be, for me to be checking now, right? <laughs> they're all mixed up. But anyway, so this outer bezel should now just come right up, hopefully. And that black tape was holding the outer bezel down. The silver tape was connected to the um, diffuser screen brackets, which we'll get to after we pull the screen out. But anyway, let me just wiggle that around. And probably missed the screw down here somewhere. Maybe. Always double check that. Oh, actually there was a clip right there. Okay. There's also a clip here. Voila. 
That's it. Okay. Now, I'm going to have to fold over my driver boards to the screen and pull the screen out and hopefully it will be an easy peasy job. Now this is really stupid how they got this. If all this stuff is stuck. If I had known it was gonna be this stuck, I would have did this the first time before I flipped it over. But it seems like under every connector there is a stick. I, I did look at it as one of those black sticky things. Uh, there's stick on both sides, but this is ridiculous. Look at that. And you have to be very careful when doing this because if you, you don't want to crack the board, you know, pull it out too hard, you definitely don't want to damage this connector right here if you stick something long and scan it up under there and then punch a hole in here. That's it. TV's done for. Nothing you can do with it. We replace the screen. So I'm trying to be very careful to do this. Um, I've got my little kit here. I'm trying to avoid anything that's metal. Okay. And so I was using this. So I'm going to try something longer. And. Okay, I don't know why they made this dumbass TV like this. <clears throat> I mean, you know you're selling cheap junk. <laughs> why not be able to fix it? But that's crazy. So once you get it pried up a little bit with, um, you know, some sort of prior, you're actually going to have to stick your fingers or hands up under there, being very careful not to rip these tabs. So kind of like I got my camera in one hand, so it's kind of hard for me to do this, but kind of like take one hand and hold it and take the other hand and go up under there and pull it up and you just hold it just to make sure that this, you know, that you don't actually pull this out and rip this. Because if you do, if you rip one of those connectors right here, uh, that's, like I said, that's probably gonna be about it for the TV. So I'm doing this very carefully. As you can see, I got one side loose almost and I got about three more of these little things and that's just on this side. So it's probably best to try to do this uh, before you take the outer bezel off. Once you get that bottom bracket off to try to, it might be easier from the, uh, while the TV is laying down on the space, it may be a little bit easier, but. Okay, that was an absolute pain in the ass. Okay, we finally got those driver boards free. I'm just gonna take them to my screen. I was very lucky not to break any of these connectors because and hopefully I didn't do any damage I won't find out until I put it back together and hook the screen up uh, because it did forcefully yank out that way where everything seems to be okay so uh, slightly bend this over take it to the screen don't over bend these at all okay because that's another place where TV manufacturers get cheap when they start making the bonds from the cables to the screen, these well, pr referring to these actual rimming connectors right here. Yeah, of course not, right? Of course not. Okay, obviously the screen is stuck onto one of the the true screen bracket, so I just unhooked it from one side, all the clips, lifted it up, and I'm just gonna twist it. As you can see, that is where it's stuck at. That is insane, bro. Insane. We're just gonna loosen the bottom up. Clip all the clips. And 
And actually, I'm just gonna leave the bottom piece on, okay? And just try to figure out how this goes. Okay, so that works out just perfectly. We put it back together. We're gonna put the sides on first and then put the bottom piece on. And just leave this on there and it should line right up. Okay, so let's go ahead and take this off finally. Hopefully we didn't do it. Oops, uh oh. Didn't see that coming. Hopefully we didn't do any damage. Okay, I'm also going to mark this side piece. Okay, right here. I'm also gonna put a mark right here on the chassis. Well, that piece goes down the bottom. And we also have to remove this bottom bracket. Okay. Just use our fingernails that comes right up. Okay, since I already got the top portion of the chassis marked. I'm just going to mark the screen so I know that this goes on that way this one goes on first even though I'm still going to keep the screens together okay Outer screens and roof side up, and then the super thick Fresno diffuser screen at the bottom. That's the one that's closest, always closest to the LEDs, the super thick one. First, first one. We keep these together. <laughs> I'm trying to. So going to mark my paper. Wow, this has a lot of strips in it. A lot. I'm not sure. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, so obviously we have to pull off our stand-ups. here okay so this should wiggle right out let me see yeah there we go wiggle those out being careful not to break them See what we got we got one two three four five six seven okay and each of these strips are in two pieces so we have 14 pieces here and i'm always wondering because i could have scored the ones i ordered had eight strips in it but let's check these and see why if we are actually getting a short i mean an open on each strip okay Okay, there are some test points on each LED. And I'm gonna do it, I'm gonna go down the line and see what's going on here. Okay, so let's see. Okay, let's throw a lid up. I'm gonna go way down here. Those are lit up. Wow. Those are lit up. Those are lit up. Those are lit up. All those are lit up. Those are lit up. And 
and this one is not. This last one is reading open. Okay, let's compare it to this one. Yep. That last one is open. And I'm actually just gonna do the same thing with every strip. Okay, the LEDs are marked plus minus. Okay. And the last one is open, okay? Compared to this one on top. And that one lights up three volts, looks like, okay? So yeah, that one's open. Open LED on that strip. Okay, I have gone as far as I needed to go. There is a short, I'm sorry, an open LED on the strips that I checked so far. There's one on this strip, one on this strip, and the very first one on this strip. So, no need for me to go any further because I have all of the strips. They are 14 in this particular package here, okay? So these are the ones. And just replace them. All you have to do is just unplug the strip and most likely, yeah, these are gonna be stuck also. Yeah, these are really stuck, okay? Anyway, um, oh, they have screws in them. Oh my God, that is insane. They have screws in all of the strips. They're like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine screws in each strip. That is insane, bro. Okay, yeah, we, we see where they're going with the CB9, right, okay? That's why they call me the big dog. They ain't gonna stop the big dog. Hopefully, keep our fingers crossed. Okay, I got all the screws out of this one strip. I'm just gonna do one strip and then, you know, uh, on, on video and then we'll finish filming when I do the rest of the TV, after I do finish the rest of the TV. Cause it's like it's gonna take a while, but I, I removed all the screws out. There's no need to mark it because just align them up, align the strips up, the new strips up with the exact holes for the screws. Right, simple, right? And of course they have this tape down. So I'm just gonna. Wow, this is insane. <laughs> yeah, if I do this, all the little lens covers are gonna pop off. So that's what I hate. Okay, let's see. That's just insane. Insane. We have one long one and one shorter one. So evidently, okay, this is the one that goes there on the back. And these here are the ones with the plug in it. Okay, it just plugs in two right there, okay. So I'm just gonna line this up with the holes. First I'm gonna put these together, okay. Put those to slide, it slides right into the other one. I think. I put this in right. Okay. There we go. Nice tight fit. And I'm just going to align all the holes up before I press it down. Look at this. This is, this is insane. <laughs> wow. I'm just gonna do it like this. I'm gonna go that, 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 one hole at a time. That one, okay, that's lined up. Okay. Looks good. Very good. Okay. And you definitely want to put your screws back in. Um, because that's just what's going to hold, as you can see, the back of these are metal or some kind of metal plating or whatever, this kind of conductive coating. So the screw's actually gonna tighten that down to the metal chassis to use, it, use the chassis as a heat sink and keep it cool. But a lot of good that did, right? Thank you. 
Okay, I've got all of my set of brand new strips in. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, and okay, they're all in there nice and secure and tight. I did put all the screws back in there, okay? And I also had to plug back in my <coughs> bottom panel to the plug, okay, with my keypad on there so I can turn it on. Just make sure everything's clear. There's nothing, you know, no metal touching any circuit boards or anything. So that's cool. Looks good so far. Okay. Let's go ahead and plug it in. Plug in my power. Okay. I got a solid blue light right here. Okay. And I'm gonna go ahead and hit my power button. Blue light starts flashing and voila looks like we're in good shape so far so let's put it back together and uh, hopefully everything else is going to be top notch okay guys looks like we're in good shape uh if you happen to test fire it up and the leds light up for about 20 seconds cut off light up cut off that's because you have to have your LDVS cable plug back into the main board. Okay. Otherwise, some CDs will do that. Sometimes it won't even come on without this being plugged in. Unless it has a complete connection. Okay, so like I said, just make sure that these are unplugged from here so they won't be touching the metal when you test fire it up. But other than that, looks like we are in good shape.
Okay guys, got it all put back together. Got our light, blue light. Gonna hit the power, which obviously is on the other side. Okay. Here we go, flashing. One, two, three. Voila. There we go. Oh, and I forget to mention this is a, a four, a, I'm sorry, a Roku TV. Okay. There it is, guys. Looks excellent. Okay. Another one saved from the alley. Okay. All right, guys. Well, thanks for watching. Uh, make sure you do subscribe and hit the notification bell uh, for more videos. If you like the video, give me a like. If you don't like it, <coughs> till then, I will see you on the next one. Big Dog, out.